for the third and last part of the uh, video lecture on biomolecules, we have the, the last two classifications, which are, which are the proteins and the nucleic acids. So proteins, these are molecules that are one of the more one of the most diverse. So lipids is a diverse group because they have they can be fused rings or they can be chains. Now for the proteins, they are one of the most studied. Actually, it's one of the most studied biomolecule aside from the nucleic acids, and they they have diverse structure. So because of the diverse structure, they have diverse function, and they and it's needed in all processes to sustain life. Or as far as what we know, in the carbohydrates, we still know a little about that. We the the, the field of study of glycobiology is still developing, so we cannot know for sure. But anyway, for the proteins, the proteins are polymeric molecules. So they are they are made up of. Um, building blocks. The building blocks is the amino acids. And there are 20 different amino acids. That's why they are considered the most diverse. Because from the 20 amino acids, you can form many different types of proteins. It's like forming novels, a large, amount, a large variety of novels and written literature with 26 letters. So you have here an alphabet of 20 amino acids. So amino acids, they are small organic molecules with a central carbon banded to the amine group, which is the nitrogen group here. And you have a carboxyl group, the acidic group in this part. So that's why it's called amino acid because you have amine and a carboxyl. Amine and an acid, so you have amino acids. And then the third important uh, part of the amino acid is the R group. The R, when we say R, it's similar to uh, the variable X in algebra. So R can be any structural group. In fact, you have 20 of them. So that is why, that is uh, how uh, you have 20 amino acids. That, uh, by the way, the 20, that doesn't mean that there are only 20 existing amino acids in the world. We have 20 amino acids that are commonly used in biological system. However, the, the world contains more than 20, so you have um, a different amino acids. Usually they are found, uh, the, the, the other, uh, the 21st and the other amino acids, um, in surprisingly, they, are, they were found in carbon-rich meteorites. So you found them in space. Okay, so the proteins as a very diverse, they are very compli complicated structures. They have very complicated structures. They, we classify their structure into four levels. The first level is the primary structure. Uh, the primary structure consists of the unique amino acid sequence of the protein. So we have 20. So you, how do you arrange those 20 in order? So take note, the protein is a, only a single chain. There are no branches in the polypeptide chains or the protein chains. It's, not, it's unbranched. So you have here a sequence, the sequence of the 20. So that's the primary structure. And the second starry structure is when the, the chain folds in itself to form hydrogen bonds with its close neighbor. So they can form helices or beta sheets. So in here, you have here the primary structure, the sequence, methionine, valine. So these are the different amino acids, methionine followed by valine, histidine, leucine, and threonine. So if you rearrange them, it becomes a different protein. So the, the identity of the protein is um, dependent on the sequence of the amino acids. Although not, not, it's not strictly that, there's also the structure, but anyway. And then you have your secondary structure here. You have, they, they form, the chain forms helices. That is, uh, that is the ribbon model. The helices are the curly cues, the, well, helical structures in the ribbon model. And they also have the beta sheets. This is a beta sheet. You have protein chains here. They are bonded with hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bond stabilizes your molecule. So that is the beta sheet. So it's represented in a flat, uh, broad flat uh, lines or, or rectangles or some 
flat ribbons. So that's the secondary structure. Now, the tertiary and the quaternary structures. The tertiary structure is the three-dimensional structure of a single polypeptide chain. So it, some, it can form a functional protein. So some proteins only have a single chain. So the, the highest level of structure they have is a tertiary structure. An example of that is myoglobin. So it's, it's all, it is composed only of one chain. It's a single, um, it, it's a complete protein with its own specific structure, which is the storage of oxygen in your muscles. Now, the quaternary structure, so some proteins uh, are composed not only of a single polypeptide chain, so it's not only made up of one chain, but more, uh, two or more chains. An example of that is hemoglobin. Another example is the antibodies. That is the one that is used in the testing kits, antibody testing kits now in the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So, those are antibodies, those are proteins. So, the, the quaternary structure, you have different um, protein chains, we call them subunits, interacting with one another. So, here is an example. This is one tertiary structure. So, one color only, that means one only one subunit. And then, this is a quaternary structure. A protein with a quaternary structure. So you have different colors. That means two subunits here. So this, the heme part is not strictly a protein. So this is uh, a cofactor. So it associates with a protein, but it's not a uh, by itself. It's not a protein. So anyway, so this is a quaternary structure. So you have four subunits interacting with one another in order to create the functional protein, which is your hemoglobin. So. The proteins sometimes also interact with other biomolecules such as uh, carbohydrates and lipids. When it interacts or forms attachments with carbohydrates, you form a glycoprotein. So, uh, glycoproteins are usually found in the surface of your cells, so they, they serve as your uh, signaling mechanism. It's actually also one of the structures that may... That it's the reason why you can be infected with diseases because the diseases, the viruses and the bacteria, they tend to, especially the virus, they tend to, uh, to bind to specific glycoproteins on the surface of the cell. So because they can bind to those glycoproteins, that's why they can infect humans. Now, lipoproteins, these are proteins that bind to lipids. And here is an example of a lipoprotein. So they, they, their function is mostly on the... Um, the transport of lipids in the blood because the lipids, the fats in itself, it cannot, it cannot, uh, it cannot travel through the blood by itself because it's hydrophobic. It's oil. It's oily. So you cannot mix oil with water, and our blood is mainly composed of water. So the alternative is to have lipoproteins transport them. So how do lipoproteins transport them? So in here you can see this: the lipids. These are the lipid part, and then the protein. The lipoprotein will embrace the lipid part, so they form somewhat packets of them, and then these are the ones that travel in the bloodstream. And these are actually the identities of the good and the bad cholesterols. Depending on the, the ratio, the percentage of the protein and the lipids in your uh, in the lipoprotein particle, so it can be HDL, high density lipoprotein, which is the good cholesterol, and it can also be a VLDL or LDL the low density lipoprotein which is the bad cholesterol so you have your uh, good and bad depending on the percentage of the lipids they have so that's uh, other important uh, structures for the proteins so and a tip uh, one thing to remember about protein is that you the structure of the protein uh, dictates its function or it's very closely related to its function. So if the structure is lost, the, the function of the protein is also lost. An example for that is albumin. Albumin is found is the protein found in the egg. So the egg whites is translucent. It's a translucent um, when it's a raw egg, it's translucent. But if you apply heat to them, the, the albumin in there denatures. So you become an opaque white color. So that's one of the, the changes. Another one, you can have um, changes in pH and salts. So for example, have you uh, eaten kilawin? So kinilaw na, uh, let's say, na, na isda. 
kinilaw na isda. So, or even kinilaw na hipon. So, it's, you have the shrimp. If you notice, um, pag kinikilaw kasi, you, ha, you add vinegar to your, to the raw fish or to the raw shrimp. And then, if you observe, the shrimp gradually changes color from the grayish, uh, gray-black color to a reddish color of the, the cooked shrimp. So, the reason for that is that the change is caused by the nutrition of the proteins. And then, you have technically cooked them in vinegar. And the same goes for the fishes. The fish is pinkish in color, but if you, uh, if you soak them in vinegar, the raw fish becomes uh, reddish. So, that is your... Uh, that is your uh, denaturation. It's an action of denaturation. So, not all denaturation is good. So, sometimes it can cause diseases. So, there had been an epidemic before of mad cow disease. If you look at uh, it's way back 2000, early 2000. So, if you look at um, records, news records of that, uh, there has been uh, a very serious or significant threat of for mad cow disease. So, mad cow disease is caused by the molecule called prion. A prion is a protein that had unraveled or it had lost its original structure. So, the, the new structure, such as this one, so this is the normal protein, and then it becomes a prion. They call it misfolded. You form a different structure. And these structures tend to aggregate. They form clumps with other uh, with other protein. So when this this protein uh, meets a normal protein, it induces the change, and then they form. To, they tend to aggregate, and then what happens? It, they they build up to the cell. It becomes a toxin, so it 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 kills the cell. Uh, and the the bad thing here is that the cell involved is specifically the brain cells. That is why prion diseases are co form, uh, are caused by the gener uh, are a form of encephalitis and neurodegenerative diseases. Literally, your brain is melting, or your brain cells are being killed by this disease. So, Creutzfeldt Jakob disease is the human counterpart for the mad cow disease. So that is caused by prions. Now, the last group of biomolecule is the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are the, uh, the most common or the most famous are the DNA and the RNA. So, the, the building blocks of the nucleic acids are the nucleotides, which are composed of your ribose, sugar, a phosphate group, and your nitrogenous base. So, in this case, it's called it's the adenine base. So, you have your uh, the functions. So, not only do these nucleotides form the DNA and the RNA, they can also function as energy carriers. In fact, adenosine triphosphate is the main energy currency of the cell. So, when any, any metabolic reaction involving energy, uh, you can be sure that your... Uh, you can be sure that your... Um, your ATP or adenosine triphosphate is involved in that. So this is the nucleic acid. So if you have the nucleotides form bonds together, so you have your nucleic acids. So chain of nucleotides. So by the way, like proteins, nucleic acids are unbranched. You don't form branches there. So RNA is a single uh, single stranded nucleic acid, whereas your DNA is a double stranded nucleic acid. So, they are most common of uh, the, uh, the their most famous function is on this, the transfer and storage of genetic material. So, ribonucleic, uh, RNA means ribonucleic acids. It contains four kinds of your nucleic acids. And the, the, the DNA is the deoxyribonucleic acid. We will discuss more about that on when we discussed about uh, the transcription and translation. But that's for, that's it for now. So this is here is the DNA. So it's the famous double helical structure of the DNA. So that concludes the lecture. So uh, I will be posting um, this uh, three-part lecture series. So in the next um, lecture, we will be discussing about, ah, okay, sorry. See you in the next lecture.